This episode of Brains on Games, we'll talk about two super fancy handmade versions of classic games, Parcheesi and Dominoes. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald. In this episode, we are going to talk about handmade versions, super fancy versions of some classic games that were sent to me a while back by the folks at Mastermind Games. Now, these this company is one that's full of artists who are creating these handmade uh, extra deluxe versions of these games from the past. So they're simple games, they're classic games, but they're sort of elevated in terms of their components and the, the, the materials that the components are made out of. So we'll talk first about a version of Parcheesi called Trojan Horse Race. I've got this giant box that just says Mastermind on it. This is what, this is what the game came in. Uh, and wait till you see the pieces of this game. Let's take a deeper look at two games by Mastermind because this is all about using board games as decorations in your home. So this version of Parcheesi, Trojan Horse Race, is a game for between two and four players. Kids age five and up can understand this one. It's a simple roll and move game uh, and games play in only about half an hour and this board is all made of wood even the dice themselves are heavy uh, these are much weightier kind of more solid dice than i'm used to in a regular board game uh, and we are talking about a wooden board now the board is in four pieces plus there's the little square here that goes in the middle for the victory space and they're attached by magnets i didn't realize there were magnets in here i couldn't even see the magnets so they're hidden away inside this solid wooden board uh, and the horses themselves that you're going to be traveling around the board with are made of concrete and brass so these are smooth and solid and weighty uh, and they've got a little pad on the bottom but you can definitely hear them when you place them down on this wooden board now Parcheesi is this is basically sorry that we're talking about. I think most folks in in Canada and the states would recognize sorry. Uh, this is exactly that. These horses are going to move around the board. You're trying to get all four to your finish line, uh, and if you happen to land on another player's horse, they have to go back to their home base. You get your horses onto the board. If you're playing with one die, you have to roll a six. If you're playing with two dice. Uh, you can put a horse on the board if you roll doubles and the, you've got arrows here that are showing the direction in which you're going there i mean there are some variations in the rule book and the one that i like that kind of makes it a little bit more strategic uh, is one where you can move your horses forwards or backwards and that kind of allows you more options in terms of capturing the other players horses and sending them back to the starting line. So this is a simple, like I said, a simple roll and move game. Basic, basic, basically you're, you're exercising your spatial skills in terms of judging where you want those horses to be and whether or not your horse is going to be able to capture one of your opponent's horses. When Mastermind sent me this giant box with all of these horses and wooden magnetic boards, they also sent their version of dominoes now i will be honest with you i have never played a game of dominoes whenever i had dominoes they're always kind of the plastic ones uh, and it would be all about standing them up and knocking them over so i never really played the game so now i've had an opportunity to play with this mastermind version uh, with wood and leather pieces in this case and a wooden leather box that slides open like this and then you've got your dominoes inside now, the game of dominoes is one, like I said, I've never played it. I didn't really know how to play dominoes. It reminds me, though, a little bit of games like Crazy Eights, where you're starting with a hand of a certain number of these things. The other players don't know which ones you have, uh, and you're trying to play a domino that matches the pips on another one that's on the board. You want to be the first one to get rid of your dominoes in this game. And this is basic, basic numeracy in this case. You're matching up numbers and you're thinking about the numbers on your dominoes. And if for whatever reason the game ends before a player is able to get rid of their last domino, of course, if you can't play a domino, you have to draw one from the center, just like in Crazy Eights. You can't play a card, you draw one from the deck. Uh, in, in a game of dominoes, if no one can play, 
then what happens is uh, the person with the lowest points is going to be the winner. And so you just add up the remaining pips on the dominoes that you have left in your hand and that's going to be the number of points that you get. So simple numeracy is what we're talking about. But the reason why I'm talking about these games is uh, really for two reasons. Now, when I looked at uh, Islandopoly, which is also by Mastermind Games, uh, one of the things that we talked about on the show was the idea of using games as decorations and creating a space that invites kids into play. And I think that's what these are all about. I mean, in spades. Uh, the Islandopoly board was so bright and white, it wasn't, it wasn't one that would fit in with the rest of the things that I have in my game room, for example, but these ones totally do. When we're talking about wood and leather and earth tones, I mean, this exactly matches the wall behind my television in the game room. So uh, these games really fit better in terms of the, the decoration and what you're trying to do, at least in my house, I should say, and what you're trying to do here is set up an environment that invites play, that puts these, that puts games and playing together as a family sort of in the front of your mind when you're in that space. Um, but that's not the only thing about these games. And I think even more so than the Islandopoly games uh, that I talked about earlier, these two games really are kind of a, a, a sensory experience. This is one of the things that I really prefer about board games over video games is that it's it's so it's in person of course you're playing with another person who's in the room with you but also it's really a tactile experience and i wanted to talk about these because i i think it's important to think of these kinds of components of these kinds of games as not only a game that you play not only a decoration uh, in your house that so pe other people can see these fancy parts that you have but also what you're doing is you're practicing something that I would call everyday mindfulness. Now, mindfulness is something that I don't think I've talked about on Brains on Games before, but mindfulness, and you may have, have read about it online as mindful meditation, it's really the idea of being really aware of what's going on around you in the present moment in kind of a non-judgmental way. That's sort of the key with mindfulness. But when you're interacting with, with pieces like this that have some weight to them, that are nice to hold, they're pleasant to look at, you, you've got uh, you, you know metal and concrete and wood and leather, uh, and the sounds that they make when you're moving them across the board uh, and the weight of the pieces is something that I think does bring you bring you into that moment. You're you're having you're not just playing a game. You're also having sort of a sensory experience with these kinds of things, uh, and I think that is a good thing for kids and, and adults too to practice sort of being in the moment. If we look at research on mindfulness, there is some evidence that mindfulness is helpful for things like emotional regulation and behavioral regulation. And, and uh, there's some research that, that backs up the use of, of mindful meditation and everyday mindfulness uh, in terms of helping people with anxiety, for example. But, um, I, and I'm, I'm not saying that playing games like this is going to cure your anxiety, but certainly if you want to bring yourself in the moment, you need to be doing something that engages engages the senses. Uh, there's a mindfulness exercise that they that they use at the children's hospital near where I live, where they say, you know, here's your exercise. Think about uh, one thing that you can see, and two things that you can hear, and three things that you can feel. So you're kind of trying to engage all of the senses and be in the present. One of the, re the, one of the times that those kinds of strategies are used, it's sort of meant to break into that kind of circular thinking that you get into when you're feeling really anxious or when you're feeling down. It's the idea of you want to reduce those repetitive thoughts and get out of that rut. Well, mindfulness can sort of put you in the present instead of worrying about what happened yesterday or what's going to happen tomorrow. You're right now, you're in the moment and you're just trying to be non-judgmental about it. It's also meant to encourage an awareness of feelings, right? So you do want to be aware and alert to what's going on inside of you. And I, I think sort of a, a precursor to that for younger kids is that awareness of, of your senses of what's going on around outside of you. Final thoughts about these two games. You're setting up an environment where play is invited and encouraged and it's kind of top of mind because you're seeing 
these these boards set up, these beautiful pieces set up, uh, and it might raise some questions and it might get people sitting around the table. They're quick games to play and they're simple, so they can be played with kids as young as five years old. Uh, certainly these colors and components are a perfect match for the decor in my basement, like I said. Uh, you've got the components that create that sensory experience and, and encourage that mindfulness. Uh, you know, even be these stone pieces, the concrete pieces are cool to the touch even. So there are lots of things for you to think about uh, as you're playing this game and to sort of be aware of and alert to as you're playing uh, both of these games. Uh, and I do think that they're, they're definitely gorgeous uh, pieces. Now, that being said, you know, we always try to talk about the pros and cons here. These are sort of older, very classic games that, you know, roll and move game or simple matching games. They're, they're not games that take advantage of the most modern kinds of mechanisms or strategies that uh, we see in lots of the games that I talk about here at, on Brains on Games. So uh, these are the classics. Part of, part of that, um, part of the reason why I think they're, they're so easily playable by younger kids is that they are so simple. Uh, and that may be a downside for some. But certainly I think these are two games that are going to be sitting on my game shelf above the game table. They're going to be sitting on the end table and pointing at where I'm going to put them <laughs> once I've done the video. Uh, and I definitely have to thank Mastermind for sending these games my way. They're a perfect match for uh, the kinds of things that I like to have uh, around me uh, in my game room. If you have any questions about either of these games or suggestions for the show, you can certainly leave them in the comment section below the video, or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go, and the previous ones are up there already. Brains on Games is the Twitter handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed, so we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you next time.